Hi everybody. Today is Wednesday, May 6, 2020. I hope you're all having a good day so far. Uh, we'll have a math lesson today and I'm going to start a new chapter book. It's called, it's a Ready Freddy book. It's called The King of Show and Tell. I think you'll really like this book. Okay, I'll read the back first, then I'm going to read a little part at the very beginning and then I'll start on chapter one. Freddy Thresher doesn't mean to get in trouble. It's just that he never has anything good for show and tell. This time he's found something that's really exciting. But if his neat freak mother finds out, she'll be furious. How can Freddy sneak his secret share past his mom and bring it to school? Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to read a little part at the very beginning before I start chapter one. I have a problem. A really, really big problem. I never have anything cool to bring for show and tell. Let me tell you about it. Chapter 1. It's called An Alligator Head. Okay, everyone, come to the rug. It's time for show and tell, said Mrs. Washy. Today's shares are Chloe and Robbie. Who would like to go first? I will, said Robbie, jumping up and running to his cubby to get his treasure. Robbie was like the king of show and tell. The kids couldn't wait to see what he brought because he always had something really cool like a porcupine quill or a 60 million year old dinosaur fossil. Today he had a real alligator head. This is a real alligator hood head, Robbie announced as oohs and ahs filled the whole room. So who cares about a dumb old dead animal head, I mumbled to myself. You know it's an alligator head because it has a rounded snout. Alligators have rounded snouts and crocodiles have pointed ones. More oohs and ahs. Alligators are reptiles, so they are cold-blooded, which means they like to live in warm places. This one lived in a swamp in Florida. Questions or comments? This is the picture. When someone was done sharing, they could pick three people in the class to ask a question or make a comment. Whenever Robbie shared, everybody's hand went up and the kids all shouted, pick me, pick me. He's not going to call on anyone who's yelling out, said Mrs. Washy. He's only looking for quiet people. I turned to Jesse and whispered, boy, the way people are acting, you'd think they'd never seen an alligator before. I still didn't know what was so great about it. You can see a real live alligator at the zoo, which is way better than some stupid dead head. You're just jealous, she whispered back. I think it's really cool. I wish I had an alligator head like that. Just then, Robbie called on Jessie. I think it's really cool. Who gave it to you? My mom did. Robbie looked around. Chloe, my grandma has an alligator purse. Ha, ha, ha. She's like the song, The Lady with the Alligator Purse, Max said, laughing hysterically. She is not, Chloe snapped. And for your information, she continued with her hands on her hips. That purse is very rare. My grandma has traveled all over the world, and she got that purse in Brazil. It's really special because you can't get one like it anymore. Yes, said Mrs. Washy. Many years ago, people used to make belts, shoes, and purses out of alligator skin, and they would kill the alligators just for their skin. This is the picture. The alligators became an endangered species, so now it is against the law to use their skin that way. Now they're protected and you could go to jail for selling things made from an alligator. Your grandma's going to jail, said Max. She is not, cried Chloe, pointing a painted red fingernail in Max's face. Max leaned over and bit Chloe's finger like a dog. Help, help, I'm going to get rabies, Chloe screamed, shaking her finger all around in the air. Okay, you two, enough, said Mrs. Washy. Max, you go sit in that chair. And Chloe, you go wash off your finger. Your grandma's not going to jail. 
I'm sure she got it many years ago when it wasn't against the law. Exactly, said Chloe as she bounced off to the sink to wash her finger. Robbie, you get to call on one more person, said Mrs. Washy. Picture. I shot my arm up. Maybe if I knew where he got it, I could beg my mom to go there and get me something really cool for my next sharing. Freddie, where'd your mom get it? My mom got it for me last week when, we went on, when she went on a business trip to New York, Robbie said, shoving the alligator head in my face. You know, she's a paleontologist. The Museum of Natural History seemed, needed, to, needed her to identify some dinosaur bones while she was there. One of the scientists gave her this alligator head as a special present for me. New York, I grumbled under my breath. So much for that idea. Thank you, Robbie, said Mrs. Washy, smiling. You always bring such interesting things for show and tell. Okay, Chloe, it's your turn. Do you need to get anything out of your cubby? No, Mrs. Washy, I have it right here in this bag, Chloe said as she sat down in front of the class and crossed her legs. She pulled a package out of the bag and carefully unwrapped a pair of pink ballet slippers with satin ribbons. These are my new ballet slippers my grandma got for me in France. They cost 300 francs and only special ballerinas get to wear them. whoop de doo I whispered. Those are lame, Max yelled out. Max, that is rude, said Mrs. Washy. If you don't have anything nice to say, please keep your mouth shut. Besides, Chloe continued, I'm not done yet. As I was saying, you can't get these in just any old store. My grandma brought them all the way from France. They have real satin ribbons, and they are the kind the prima ballerinas wear. Now I'm ready for questions or comments. A lot of kids raised their hands. She called on Jessie first. Jessie, you are so lucky to have such a rich grandma. I know, Chloe said, smiling. She called on me next. Freddie, what's a Frank? And there's the picture. Oh, that's what they call the money in France. I get to call on one more person. Robbie? Why was your grandma in France? For a vacation. She has another house there. It is a really, really big castle, like in a fairy tale. Well, thank you, Chloe, said Mrs. Washy. The slippers are very beautiful. Now let's see who, who Monday Monday's shares are. Freddie and Jessie, it will be your turn on Monday. Great. I didn't have anything good to bring in. I had already shared everything from my shark collection. Nothing I ever brought in would be as cool as all the stuff Robbie and Chloe brought in. Nothing. And that's the end of chapter one. So tomorrow I'll read chapter two in The King of Show and Tell. Okay, today in math we're on lesson six. And we're going to learn about telling time to the hour using digital clocks. So you need to tear out the sheet that looks just like mine. It's page 595 in your workbook. Okay, there's a little story that goes with the picture on this page. It says, Amelia wakes up for school at 7 o'clock. Write what time, or write that time, sorry, on the digital clock. So whenever you say o'clock, you have two zeros at the end, after the two dots. So, in order to write 7 o'clock, we would just write a 7 in front of the two dots. That's called a colon. Then, as I said, whenever you say o'clock, it's two zeros after the two dots. So, this digital clock says 7 o'clock. While we're doing our math today, too, I want you to think about digital clocks that you might see at home. 
Like sometimes there are alarm clocks that might help wake you up in the morning that are digital. Um, a lot of people's watches have digital time on them. That's what my watch looks like. It has digital time. Okay, let's go on. Another type of clock is a digital clock. A digital clock uses numbers to show the hour and minutes. The clock shows two o'clock, so you always write the hour first. So two would go first, so trace over the two, that's the hour. Then you have the colon, the two dots, and then whenever it's o'clock, you write zero, zero. So the minutes would be zero, zero. So the hour is two, the minutes are zero, zero, because it's two o'clock. Okay, let's go on to the next part. It says, use a clock to show the time. And I know you don't have little clocks at home. But tell what time is shown. Write the time on the digital clock. So remember, when the minute hand, the longer blue hand, is on the 12, we're going to write 0, 0 for the minutes. Okay? So let's look at number 1. Let's look at the hour hand first. That's the red hand. The hour hand is pointed to the 11. So you're going to write an 11 on the first line. Then you have the two dots. It's 11 o'clock. The minute hand is pointing to the 12. So then you write 0, 0 on the next line, on the blue line. So it's 11 o'clock. Okay, if you look at number two, the hour hand is pointed to the six, the minute hand is pointed to the 12. So it's six o'clock. So you're going to write a six on the first line. Then after the dots, remember when it's o'clock and the minute hand's pointed to the 12, you write zero, zero. So you should have six on the first line and two zeros on the second line. Number three, both hands, the hour hand and the minute hand, are pointed to the 12 this time. So it's 12 o'clock. So you would write a 12 on the first line and two zeros on the second line. Number four, this clock is showing three o'clock. The hour hand is pointed to the three the minute hand is on the 12. So you write a three on the first line and two zeros on the second line. That shows three o'clock. Okay, at the bottom it says, how is reading an analog clock the same as reading a digital clock? How is it the same? Talk to somebody at home about that. Okay, let's go on now. We're on number five, and I know you don't have clocks again to show the time, but it says tell what time is shown. Write the time on the digital clock. So I'll give you the directions, but I want you to write in the numbers this time. So the first clock says eight o'clock because the hour hand's on the eight, the minute hand's on the twelve. So on the digital clock, underneath the analog clock, write 8 o'clock. Number 6, I want you to look at the time, and then I want you to tell somebody at home what time that clock shows, and then write it on the digital clock. And then do the same for number 7, 8, 9, and 10. Okay, number 11 says, Rachel goes to the cafeteria to eat at 11 o'clock. She is there for one hour. What time does she leave the cafeteria? Well, remember, she went to the cafeteria to eat at 11 o'clock. She's there for one hour. So it would be 11 plus 1 
would equal what? What time does she leave the cafeteria? Write that number, what 11 plus 1 equals, on the line. Okay, number 12. Mrs. Webb's class came in from recess at 2 o'clock. They were at recess for an hour. What time did they go out to recess? Explain to a friend how you know. So I want you to explain this to somebody at home. So remember, they came in from recess at 2 o'clock. They were outside at recess for one hour. So you're going to take away one from the two. Because remember, they came in at 2 o'clock. They were out for one hour. So you're going to subtract one or take away one. So what time would that be? Put the number on the line. And then it says that time, o'clock. Okay, at the bottom. It says, explain how a digital clock shows the time. Okay, in our word bank, as you can see, it says minutes and hours. So those are the two words we're going to write on the lines. We just have to figure out where those words go. So it says the blank are shown on the left and the blank are shown on the right. So on a digital clock, if you're looking at a digital clock, is it minutes or hours on the left side? And then is it minutes or hours on the right side? You need to write the words where they belong in the sentence. Have a good day, everybody.